It is time that people know that Black Lightning is back. How's it going everyone? Lisa here and it is finally time for me to talk about CW's latest entry into the superhero world, Black Lightning. You all requested it down in my comments and I'm finally delivering. I've been busy. There's a lot of shows that come out on Tuesday so it's hard for me to do these because they take a lot of time but I finally got around to it and you know what? I am a Black Lightning fan. This show is actually really good and I thought oh hey the pilot maybe the pilot will be good but sometimes it goes downhill from there. I have not been disappointed. I think the show keeps getting better and I'm hooked and I really want to know more about these characters and what's going to happen. Now I won't lie, I'm, I'm not too familiar with Black Lightning. I am a little more versed in the Marvel world than the DC world, but I love me a good superhero show no matter where it comes from. So, I don't know about the comics, but this makes it fun for me because this is like something new and I don't have anything to compare it to. But I am curious if you are a fan of the comics, what you think about the show. So definitely leave those comments and thoughts down below. I'm going to briefly run through the gist of the first two episodes before we talk about this week's third episode in a little more detail. We are introduced to Jefferson Pierce, who is Black Lightning, a superhero who's able to basically control electricity, shoot lightnings, make force fields, things of that nature. He retired and hung his cape up around nine years ago and is now the principal at Garfield High School. And he is one damn good principal. He's actually managed to keep the peace with the gangs and keep crime out of his school, but that doesn't mean that the crime the 100 Gang and Tobias Whale are creating is not escalating outside in Freeland, the city. Jefferson has two daughters who are both headstrong, smart, and kick ass. Anissa is the older of the two and she's in medical school but also teaches at Garfield High School. Jennifer is the younger of the daughters, I think she's like a sophomore, and she's definitely going through typical teen rebellion stage. And she's the one who finds herself in some trouble with the 100 Gang, which ultimately leads to the girls being kidnapped, forcing Black Lightning to come out of retirement to save them. Another strong woman in Jefferson's life is his ex-wife Lynn, who left Jefferson after it seemed like he just couldn't give up the Black Lightning lifestyle and she was tired of seeing him come home hurt all the time. They're working on reconciling, but him entertaining the thoughts of bringing back Black Lightning may put a halt to all of those. Sticking by Jefferson's side is Peter Gamby, who is like his version of Alfred, who owns a tailor shop which serves as his cover for his workshop a la Kingsman. Jefferson does end up using his Black Lightning alter ego to rescue his girls from Lala, the leader of the 100 CD motel and gang, and now Gamby's trying to convince Jefferson that the people really need Black Lightning and he should keep it up. Meanwhile, Jefferson's pal Inspector Henderson over at the police department may be his good friend in real life, but one person Henderson is not good friends with is Black Lightning. He thinks Black Lightning is a vigilante who just ends up causing more problems than helping. It's the untimely death of one of his former students, Lawanda, that gives Jefferson the final nudge he needs to decide to bring back Black Lightning. Now, Lala and the 100 aren't necessarily the big Bad's Black Lightning will be facing this season. Ultimately, they work for a crime boss named Tobias Well, who believes that he killed Black Lightning back in the day, so whoever must be running around pretending to be Black Lightning is an imposter, and he's pretty pissed that someone is messing with his streets. Anissa, Jefferson's oldest daughter, ends up having a PTSD panic attack from the kidnapping and discovers that she has some unique abilities like super strength. Like father, like daughter, right? Jennifer, on the other hand, finds comfort in her best pal, Khalil, and the two end up moving out of the friend zone. And that's essentially where we kind of start episode three. So let's break down this week's episode. Anissa's trying to figure out what's up with her newfound abilities. So she skips family dinner, which was actually quite an eventful one, and heads to a junkyard to get her aggression out on a poor washing machine. She ends up kicking and punching it, but it barely moves and she just gets some bruises and some sore knuckles. She just can't figure out how she gets her powers to kind of activate, but then something falls off a big pile of junk towards her and she's able to concentrate and that thing just bounces right off of her and then she uses her abilities to launch that washing machine across the junkyard. Hyped on what just happened, she heads to the library to do some research on genetic mutations while she also re-watches the video she filmed of herself kicking that washing machine. I'm gonna let it slide here how the video she watches doesn't really match up to how she placed her phone in that junkyard. At the library, she meets one of the librarians named Grace who definitely piques her interest. Things get a little flirty and Anissa has obviously been having some trouble with her girlfriend throughout the first two episodes, so 
Grace seems like she might be the new love interest moving forward. After some conversation, Anissa notices the comic book in Grace's pocket, which is an issue of The Outsiders, which obviously ties into the Black Lightning comics, if you're familiar with those, which I'm really not, I had to Google it. Anyway, Grace thinks that Anissa might be interested in the comic book since she's interested in genetic mutations and stuff like that, and there's talk of superhero costumes and all kinds of fun things like that. Grace also says that she works at a nearby bar that hosts a cosplay party every Friday night, which she invites Anissa to. Now, Anissa opts not dressed as a suggested vampire or supergirl and goes for a catwomanish look instead. As she's dancing with Grace, her girlfriend comes storming in, and well, as you guessed, she is pissed, and there is a breakup. Towards the end of the episode at the hospital, Lynn tries to get Anissa to open up about what's bugging her, and she knows it's not the breakup. Anissa seems like she might be about to say something, but they're interrupted by Jennifer. But Lynn does tell her that she'll be here and ready when Anissa's ready to talk. I have a feeling, though, that since Lynn isn't too happy about Jefferson using his powers again, she's not going to be too happy about Anissa wanting to take all that responsibility on as well. And then Lynn's going to have to worry about not one person possibly getting beat up and dying every night, but two. Now, the death of LaWanda in the last episode has made some waves and inspired Reverend Holt to organize a march, which Jefferson and Inspector Henderson aren't really supportive of. The Reverend says that they can't trust the police and they believe that God and Black Lightning can save their community. Meanwhile, Jefferson's just looking at him like, what have I done? Because he's really seeing the impact of Black Lightning on the community. Jefferson knows he can't stop the march, so he and Gamby devise a plan to reroute the march so Black Lightning can kind of keep an eye on everything. Meanwhile, Tobias Whale goes to visit the mysterious Lady Eve who was played perfectly by Jill Scott, who we are used to hearing her sing, but I'm actually kind of impressed by her acting skills. Lady Eve actually seems pretty sweet, but you can still feel the villainous undertones there, and there's something very scary about someone who can just seem so nice, but also you know they could snap your head off in a second. Yeah, that's what Lady Eve is, and I am curious to learn more about her. She's very intimidating, and she does not want the people in Freeland trying to take back their streets, and she's ready to do whatever she has to, and so is Tobias, so they put a plan in motion. Tobias sends his La La replacement to go shoot up the crowd of marchers. As the march is happening, Black Lightning watches from above and then notices that Lynn and the girls are right in the front of the march with the Reverend, which he did not know was going to happen. It's too late for him to send a warning or anything to the girls, and then he sees the gunman heading toward the crowd. So Black Lightning leaps off the building and creates an awesome force field to block all the bullets. The Reverend is so amazed by what Black Lightning has done that he ends up leading the marchers in a sing-along of Amazing Grace. But that's pretty short-lived when Tobias comes driving by to check on what's going on and sees that his man has failed and Black Lightning is indeed alive. It's not an imposter. Sorry, Toby, looks like you didn't kill him after all. Tobias gets his revenge, though, silencing the crowd, telling his right-hand woman to kill Black Lightning or to kill the marchers, and she takes her rifle and fires a shot that ends up hitting the Reverend, and in fact goes right through him hitting someone else, Jennifer's boyfriend, Khalil. Now, while most of this episode was pretty heavy and intense, Jennifer and Khalil's storyline actually gave us the light moments you need to balance out an episode like this. So seeing him get shot at the end of this episode was actually pretty heartbreaking. Their storyline did its job though. It made you feel awkward and also made you laugh a lot because let's be real, watching a teenager tell her parents the exact day she plans on losing her virginity and then seeing them squirm trying to figure out what to say to her will kind of never not be funny. Her parents did tell her that she could come to them with anything and be honest with them, so I guess you kind of gotta be careful what you wish for, right? This storyline takes it up a notch when Jefferson stops Khalil in the hall of school to inquire about his cleaning habits. Dries his fungus-covered feet before he dries his important parts. So, uh... No, no, I'm asking you, do you want to give my daughter athlete's foot in places where athlete's feet should not be? Okay, back to the serious stuff though. It looks like Khalil's days of being a track star and his dreams of wanting to get out of Freeland in that way are over. Turned out a bullet hit his spine and he may not walk again. We also see Gamby going through the surveillance footage from the march and he sees the video of Tobias Whale who's responsible for the shooting. We hear Gamby say, sorry Jefferson, then delete it. So why doesn't he want Jefferson to see this tape of Tobias? Is it because Tobias is his old foe and he doesn't want 
you know, Black Lightning to go out for vengeance right now? Why is it? The citizens of Freeland also continue to say on the news how much they believe in Black Lightning and how he's like an angel to them, or like they've said multiple times in the episode, like a Black Jesus. So that pretty much wraps up these first three episodes of the season. Now there hasn't been a ton of explosive action yet, which of course is what makes superhero shows kind of fun, but I kind of like that it is building up a little slower. It's helping me kind of get attached to these characters and to learn about them instead of just being launched into, let's have a huge fight every week. I am, like I said, curious to see more about our villains, Tobias and Lady Eve, out of everybody. I want to know more about Tobias and Black Lightning's history, why Tobias thought he killed Black Lightning. Um, I think we heard that B Tobias killed Black Lightning's father, Jefferson's father, or something like that, right? And I also want to dig deeper into Lady Eve because she seems like she is part of a bigger picture. And when I googled what the Outsiders is, there's some organization called Cobra or something that her character is part of. So somehow that might play into things. And it's just all kind of confusing right now, but also very intriguing. For now, though, let's take a look at the promo for next week. If I could make people pay for what they did, that'd be a good thing, right? The city is under attack and we're losing. You only lose if you stop fighting. What he's doing is heroic. I can do this all night long. Oh yeah, looks like we're getting a family affair in the next episode. Looks like Vigilante and Nissa is getting let loose and more of the action that I kind of was hoping for is about to happen. Now I want to know what you think of the show so far, so hit me up down in the comments. Are you liking it? If you are a fan of the comics, how does this show compare? And what do you want to see happen with the rest of this season? Let me know. I'm going to do my best to keep recapping this show weekly. It might not be directly on Tuesdays, but I will do my best because I know a lot of you did request it in comments on my other recaps for different shows. So until then, let me know all your thoughts on this episode down below, and then you can click right over here to check out some more of my videos to hold you over till the next episode. I got you know, 10 TV shows you didn't know were turning 10, 10 movies, all that kind of stuff. And hit the thumbs up if you like what you see. Subscribe. My name's Lisa. I'll see you next time. Sorry I'm rambling. Peace out.